Hi everyone, I'm Liz and I'm joined here by my teammates Camila, Leia, and David. And we're here to discuss our senior design project, Micro Flu Fish, a rapid and accurate flu diagnostic. Influenza, or the flu, is an upper respiratory illness that is highly prevalent. Worldwide, there are three to five million severe cases documented each year, and these result in anywhere from 250,000 to 500,000 deaths per year. Additionally, this exerts a huge toll of $10.4 billion in health care to the U.S. alone, an additional $87.1 billion economic toll from missed days at work and reduced productivity. A big challenge with the flu is that it's difficult to diagnose based on symptoms alone. Complaints of cough, fever, runny nose overlap with other common illnesses such as the cold or bacterial infections. In fact, of flu-infected patients that seek treatment, approximately 45% are inappropriately prescribed antibiotics, and another 23% painkillers to allay symptoms. However, this is truly problematic because treatment for the flu is best when administered early to halt virus reproduction. A recent study showed that administration of medication 12 hours post-infection reduced the duration of symptoms by three days as compared to administration of medication at 48 hours. This narrow treatment, time to treatment window is exacerbated by the current state of diagnostics. The current gold standard is real-time PCR, a lab assay. It is highly sensitive, however, it can take up to two days to produce a result, by which time the illness has escalated to its worst state possible. On the other hand, there are rapid diagnostics, like those shown on the left of this plot. While highly rapid, they are very inaccurate. During the 2009 H1N1 outbreak, for example, the CDC actually advised doctors to completely disregard a negative test result from these devices. <laughs> Thus, you can see, there's a huge need to develop a device that is both fast and accurate. <clears throat> and so for our senior design project, we set out to do exactly that. We wanted to create a device that was rapid to fit into this narrow time to treatment window. We also wanted to create a device that was accurate to provide patients with the best care possible. We wanted a device that was point of care so that a patient could go to the doctor, get a diagnosis, and walk out with the correct prescription all within the same visit. And lastly, we wanted to develop a device that was able to detect the different strains of the flu so that a doctor could choose the best medication for their patient. And so, this year, we spent our time developing microflufish. Our vision for microflufish is that we can take a sample from the nose, which is commonly used for current diagnostics for the flu. We could run, it, run the sample through our device, subject it to a chemical protocol, image the sample in the device, and lastly, analyze it with a computer algorithm to output a diagnosis. I would now like to hand it off to Leia, who will discuss more of the details of microflufish. Thanks, Liz. So I'd like to start explaining microflufish by breaking it down into its three components. I'll begin by describing the technique of fish and then explain how we've applied this to the flu. Finally, I'll explain how we've incorporated this into our microfluidic device. To begin, fish stands for fluorescence in situ hybridization. Fluorescence is our imaging modality. In situ stands for within, in situ means within intact cells and hybridization is how we attach our probe to our target. In this case, our target is a strand of RNA, such as that found within the flu. To begin, you design an oligonucleotide sequence complementary to your target and attach our fluorescent probe to that. We can then hybridize our probe to our target strand. By designing an oligonucleotides that are complementary to adjacent segments of your RNA strand, you can tile the probes along together so you can so that you can generate very bright images and visualize single RNA molecule, molecules shown here in white. So next, we applied this to the flu. As I alluded to earlier, influenza is a viral infection that is, that is RNA-based. This means we can design probes that specifically bind to the RNA of flu. In doing so, we can generate these images here, such that the flu-infected cells are very bright compared to the uninfected cells. We've also found that when targeting flu RNA, we can use hybridization times that are as low as 10 seconds. Now this is all performed in the laboratory, but we want to, we want to create a point of care diagnostic. To do this, we chose to use microfluidics. Using microfluidics, we can scale down our protocol, making it less expensive, easy to use, and portable. 
This makes it uh, easily incorporatable into, the, into clinics nationwide. Now here's Camila to give more details on how our device works. Thanks, Leah. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit about like, the engineering and technical aspects of our device. On the left, you can see a side view of our device. It's very simple. It has basically two layers separated by a filter. We insert layers, we insert, insert the infect, infected flu cells through the top. They go into the bottom layer, and they are caught in the filter upon which we image from the bottom. To illustrate this point, I'm going to guide you through a, small, through a short animation. On the right, you can see a top view of our device, and on the top, you can see the cells. First, we add the cells onto the device, and they are trapped in the filter. Next, we load the cartridge, which, con which contains all of the reagents that we need for our, for our assay. Note that this is only 4.2% of the total volume that you would need to run this assay at the lab, which is extremely important in tra transitioning this technique to a point-of-care diagnostic. So first, we add the hybridization solution, which contains all the fluorescent probes to attach to the target RNA. Next, we add a wash buffer to remove any excess probes that are not attached to our target. Lastly, we add a stabilization solution, which will make sure that the fluorescent probes are indeed attached to the RNA that we want. Now we are ready to image. Note that we are able to image our cells with 20x magnification, which is inexpensive and readily available. These would be the images that you, that you would see under the microscope. On the left, you can see a DAPI stain, which is a nuclear stain that will highlight infected and uninfected cells alike. On the right, you can see an Alexis stain, which will highlight the fluorescent probes that we were talking about, which will only point out where the infected cells are located. What we, dis what we did was design an algorithm that first can detect the cell contours in our image. Next, we applied a threshold that, can, that will tell us which cells are infected and which ones are not. In fact, we were able to detect the infection in a single cell with such accuracy that our, that our sensitivity and specificity were over 90%. What this means is that our false positive and false negative rate were extremely low. Now I'm going to pass it on to David, who's going to talk to you about manufacture and future directions. Thank you, Camila. Um, so manufacturing microfluofish is incredibly simple and can be done in under two minutes. We first laser cut our acrylic tops in dual-sided mylar adhesive. We then place our acrylic top onto our mylar adhesive, place a filter onto the second layer. We then combine those two pieces, finally adding a cover glass to the uh, bottom of our device to seal it. Leah and Liz will pass out samples uh, for you. Finally, we aim to create a flu diagnostic that is flu subtype specific. This can be extremely important during um, influenza epidemics, such as in 2009. Um, it's very important for patients to know whether they have a serious infection of, say, H1N1, or um, a more mild case. We found that our probes were highly specific to H1N1, H3N2, and flu B. In summary, we found that our device was rapid able to provide a diagnosis in minutes. We also created a device that was accurate, that exceeds the industry standard. Our device is point of care, easy to use, and flu subtype specific. And we did this for a device cost of under $3.25. And by using microfluidics, we were able to reduce the solution volume to minimal levels, so large volumes can be stored within a single clinic. Now, where we're going forward with this project is to take um, our process and move it into the clinic to make a true diagnostic evidence. But so far we've been talking to you about what microflufish is. And we want to take a, a couple minutes to talk to you about what microflufish can be. Right now we have a prototype for a device that performs four simultaneous assays on uh, a single patient sample. If we couple that with the four fluorescent dyes that we're able to use, we could provide a clear diagnosis for 16 different viral infections simultaneously in minutes, essentially replacing the upper respiratory viral panel used in clinics today. Additionally, we think our device is perfectly suited to be used as a research tool. As a pilot test, we handed our device to researchers in the medical school who are interested in pancreatic cancer. And shown here, imaged within our device, is pancreatic cancer cells that are looking at specific cancer biomarkers. Overall, we created a device that was rapid and accurate for diagnosing the flu um, using simple microfluidic and fluorescent microscopy principles. We would like to thank our advisors, Dr. Arjun Raj and Dr. David Isidore, as well as Dr. Scott Hensley, who um, is our influenza expert, as well as Dr. Kristen Feemster, who is transitioning us into clinical samples. And, uh, of course, we would like to thank uh, MD-PhD student Sydney Schaefer for supporting us throughout the extent of the project. 
Um, we would like to thank you for listening to us and open the floor to any questions you may have. Um, it goes into a microscope. So the device is actually the size of a standard microscope slide, and you're able to image cells by going through the bottom of the device. Okay. So the person, the, the physician administering it would do the procedure, go look at it under the microscope, and in minutes would know whether you have a tumor. Right, exactly. How are you able to get the, the sensitivity here without having to do the replication that, that's necessary in PCR? So um, we're not amplifying the RNA in any way. We're just binding uh, fluorescent probes to that. Um, so our, our copy rate is um, one per um, RNA. And since we tile it, we're, we're sure that we're specific to viral RNA and don't have any mismatch. Um, right now, we have software in place to optimize that process when moving to clinical samples, and um, shown uh, in a couple previous slides, we have it ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done any testing where you compared your results to the standard way they test it now on patients that you know have the flu? So we're not yet able to uh, produce a diagnosis for a patient. Um, we're trying to move into clinical samples as soon as possible, um, but we have, we've submitted an IRB to do that. Um, we're just not yet there. Yeah. 